Hi everyone, um, welcome to the first recording for uh, Meredith Michaels' um, reading on personal identity. Uh, now, straight off the bat, you probably notice some, well, you know, uh, regular viewers uh, at least will notice a little bit of a difference here. I cannot for the life of me find a photo of Meredith Michaels to put on this. There is a very, very, very little thumbnail one in um, the reader book for anyone who's in my class, so you can get a look at her there. Um, but in my search for her photos, um, I've certainly found a lot of articles and things like that. Very intriguing to read. Um, so yeah, get around her, um, have a read through uh, some of her stuff. Very, very, very um, outspoken supporter of uh, women's rights, particularly their right to um, choice around uh, their body. Um, and yeah, very open uh, in her discussions. Um, uh, she had a, an abortion when she was younger and so talks about that and the importance that being able to make that decision uh, has, or has had on her life. Um, so very interesting to read, whether you agree or not. Um, yeah, get around her, support her. Hopefully, when more people know about her, we'll be able to get some pictures up and uh, I'll be able to put one up on here. Um, but, uh, so this first part, the Michaels reading itself is pretty short, so um, the recordings hopefully won't be too long if I can keep my, um, my tangents relatively limited. Uh, so this first one, I'm going to go through uh, uh, the little intro that she gives and then basically outline the first theory that she looks at, which is more or less um, what we've discussed as the same brain theory. So identity follows your brain, wherever your brain goes. Um, she links this to Locke's same memory theory, um, or rather the memory theory of personal identity. So if you haven't already, um, you know, obviously everyone in my class, we've already talked about Locke. Um, you can check out the Locke videos on, uh, on the on the channel um, and get a better understanding of that. But in a very brief nutshell, um, uh, Michaels talks about Locke's, um, I guess, reliance on memory being the key source of evidence for the continuation of personal identity. Remember, for, um, for Locke, personal identity is uh, determined by consciousness and continuation of consciousness is determined by memory. So in its simplest form, we could say Locke's um, theory of personal identity is that you are whoever you remember being. Um, Michaels is going to show that there might be some problems with this. Okay, uh, She's going to do this with a little bit of a strange one, um, which is uh, the a thought experiment um, to do with a poor unfortunate soul named Wanda or Walter if you'd prefer um, and you uh, so I won't uh, I mean it's up there on the screen but um, you know I won't divulge too much just yet uh, we'll find out the tragic fate of Wanda and yourself uh, and the philosophical dilemma that this leads to um, so Books open, uh, obviously, right at the start of the Michaels reading, uh, at the top left side of the page, it's the number 392. Um, and yeah, let's get started. Um, so, uh, on personal identity by Meredith Michaels. Uh, while they are illuminating, particularly in relation to one another, these traditional answers, by this she's talking for our purposes about Locke, but she's also discussing um, a little bit about another philosopher, um, uh, Immanuel Kant, and to a lesser extent Hume, who we have obviously also studied, but she deals a lot with Locke um, in this section. Uh, traditional answers to the philosophical problem of self-identity raise as many questions as they answer. So this concept of, um, you know, what should a response in philosophy do? Uh, in class, I've talked about, um, you know, explanatory power. Um, so uh, particularly when we're talking about, for example, dualism, um, the dualist argument doesn't necessarily give us much explanatory power because whilst it gives us a, uh, an apparent solution to the question of how we exist as 
a, mo a separate mind and separate body, it doesn't actually answer the question of how that happens. And if anything, it leads to further questions. Um, so one of the criticisms of dualism that we discussed was that um, it has limited explanatory power. Um, what Michaels is saying here is that the theories of people like Locke and Hume and others, um, their weakness is they don't hold very much explanatory power. Um, so they give you a snapshot of what, could, what um, personal identity could be, but there are big holes in the theories themselves. And so this means that um, whilst I can use them to answer the question of what is personal identity, well, you know, for Locke, it is consciousness. For Hume, it is you know, a bundle of ever-changing attributes. I don't really get any answers to the question of, well, what is consciousness or what is this ever-changing bundle of attributes and how does this create, con uh, how does this create identity and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so there are still lots of questions that are left unanswered um, in, uh, in these traditional responses. Um, so now we're going to get to the tragic case of wonder. Um, to see this, let us travel to a not very distant make-believe world. One night after a serious bout with the library, you and your best friend Wanda Bag, or Walter if you prefer, decide to indulge yourself at the College Haven, which I can only assume is like a cafe or, you know, that sort of thing. Before you can stop her, Wanda steps out in front of a steamroller <laughs> that, uh, that happens to be moving down Main Street. Okay. Uh, Wanda is crushed. <laughs> it's just such a gruesome thought experiment. But anyway, um, Wanda is, cr is crushed. Witnessing the horror of the accident, you have a stroke. Fortunately, Dr. haagen uh, the famous neurosurgeon and apparently ice cream uh, aficionado, um, has been visiting the campus, uh, sorry, who has been visiting the campus, is also on the way to the College Haven. Taking charge, he rushes you and Wanda to the health centre where he performs a body transplant. Uh, he takes, now this is important for understanding the, like, the parameters of the thought experiment. Uh, he takes Wanda's brain, which miraculously escaped the impact of the steamroller. So I imagine that Wanda was rolled like feet first and the steamroller managed to stop before it actually got to her brain. Um, this is like Looney Tunes um, level death here. Um, but anyway, uh, uh, so Wanda's brain, which miraculously escaped the impact of the steamroller and puts it in the place of yours. So she takes, uh, sorry, uh, Dr. haagen takes your brain out of your head, which has obviously been damaged by, um, you know, the stroke, uh, irredeemably damaged by the stroke and puts Wanda's brain, which is perfectly fine because it managed to escape the steamroller, into your head, attaches all the wires and whatnot, and hey presto. Um, uh, sorry, and puts it in place of yours, which was of course severely damaged by the stroke. Okay, so as I've got on there on the screen, like a really basic breakdown in dot points. Um, so, Wanda's brain, in your body, okay? Um, uh, after several days, the following battle ensues. Wanda's parents claim that they are under no obligation to continue paying tuition. I always, you know, I really appreciate this. I think, uh, you know, after hearing that their child had been tragically crushed by a steamroller, my first question would be, well, who's paying for the tuition? <laughs> the tuition uh anyway um thought it's a thought experiment people so um after all wanda was killed by a steamroller your parents claim that they are under no obligation to continue paying tuition after all you died of a stroke it is clear then that a basic question is in need of an answer who is the person lying in the bed in the health center is it wanda is it you is it someone else Altogether, for the sake of discussion, let us call the person lying in the bed Schwander. Okay, um, so uh, we've got 
so this is essentially the outline of the thought experiment. Okay, you've got Wanda's head in your body. All right, this is the only change that's occurred between uh, the two of you. So the person who used to identify themselves as Wanda, that person's brain is now within the body of the person that ident identified themselves as you. Okay. Um, but we've got this question of, well, responsibility, in this case, fiscal responsibility. Who's going to pay the tuition for the survivor of this accident? Both of the parents are claiming that their child died in this tragedy. Uh, Wanda's parents are claiming that Wanda died uh, by being crushed by a steamroller, and your parents are claiming that you died from a stroke. So who does pay tuition here? Who, who is responsible? Uh, in, in essence, which identity is waking up in the health center? Okay, is it you? Is it Wanda? Or is the only appropriate answer to say uh, that it's actually neither of you? It's a third identity, which Michael's sort of confusingly here um, calls Schwanda. Okay, these are the parameters of the thought experiment. Excuse me. Um, uh, so yeah, let's move into kind of the first um, theory that Michael's is going to use to try and explain. Um, explain a way to answer this question, which is the same brain theory. Okay, so uh, hopefully you've had a little bit of a look at this in your textbooks, um, uh, but the same brain theory, it is what it sounds like. Um, you are your brain, and as such, your identity follows your brain. So in this case, it seems pretty straightforward. Your Wanda's brain has been put into your body, so despite the fact that she doesn't look like Wanda anymore, uh, it is Wanda who wakes up because it is the same brain, okay? So let's get stuck into this. Uh, what reason do we have for believing that Schwanda is Wanda? Given that one's self-consciousness, uh, one's thoughts, beliefs, and feelings are all mental phenomena, we might naturally conclude that a person goes wherever her brain goes on the assumption that our me mental characteristics are more likely located in the brain than in, say, our smallest left toe. So if you think back to SMART, SMART actually discussed this idea a little bit um, in Area of Study 1. Uh, at the moment, all of the evidence is pointing to the fact that all of our mental phenomena, as was listed just before, consciousness, thoughts, beliefs, feelings, um, all of those seem to be present within the brain. Is it possible that they're present somewhere else in the body? Perhaps. Um, you know, if you're interested by this, you could look at the um, cellular theory of memory, uh, which is the idea that memory is not purely stored in the brain, it's actually stored throughout the body, throughout the cells of the body. Um, there's a certain validity to this, it helps to explain a few things, but at the moment, the weight of evidence is certainly pointing in the direction of all mental phenomena is, uh, is part of the brain um, activity. Okay, so brain sensations, um, or brain processes are sensations, as Smart would say. Um, Schwanda will remember having set off for the College Haven with you. So important here, she's linking to memory. So remember, this is a, a key thing for Locke. Uh, Schwanda will remember having set off for the College Haven with you. She will remember receiving the College Acceptance Letter uh, addressed, Dear Wanda, we are happy to inform you that, etc., etc., uh, she'll remember being hugged by Wanda's mother on the afternoon of her first day of school. This is, uh, that is, Schwanda will believe that she is Wanda. So this is really important because from a personal identity point of view, um, uh, this person who's woken up, which Michaels is calling Schwanda, the com combination of Wanda's brain and your body is Schwanda, um, they will believe that they are Wanda. This sort of has echoes of Locke's Prince and the Cobbler thought experiment. Um, so just very quickly, uh, the mind of a prince wakes up in the body of a cobbler. And Locke points out that the true identity is the first person identity, okay? That that person is a prince. However, the rest of the world will probably treat them as a cobbler. Um, because they look like the cobbler, despite the fact that this cobbler, apparent cobbler at least, would have all of the memories and thoughts of the prince. 
Um, this is an issue that Locke discusses a little bit, and he talks about the fact that if we had access to consciousness, then we could know perfectly about the identity of the prince and the cobbler, but we shouldn't be surprised when the rest of the world treats them like a cobbler and not a prince. Okay. Um, uh, in this case, it would seem that Locke would say, well, the person waking up is Wanda. If they have all the thoughts, all the feelings, and importantly, all the memories of Wanda, then they are Wanda. Okay. Um, so this is very clearly linking to Locke's memory theory. Okay. So uh, your consciousness, your continued consciousness relies on memory and your continued consciousness is your personal identity. Okay, uh, so this seems relatively clear cut. So what issue could Michaels have with it? Well, let's have a look. Nevertheless, the fact that Schwanda believes herself to be Wanda does not in itself guarantee that she is. Do we have any basis for insisting that Schwanda is Wanda and not someone who is deluded into thinking that she's Wanda? So whilst it doesn't happen after a tragic steamroller accident, there have been plenty of cases where people have claimed to be someone else. Um, you know, uh, a little bit later on, we'll be having a look at Nietzsche when we move into the good life. Um, when the syphilis finally rotted out his brain enough that he completely snapped, um, he believed that he was several different people for a period of time. Um, Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, Socrates, Jesus Christ. Um, so this is, um, this is, well, it's not common, it does happen. People do believe that they are someone else. Think of all the people who claim to be, you know, the reincarnation of Cleopatra or Julius Caesar or whatever. Um, we don't treat these people as if they are those people, okay? Um, Nietzsche wasn't treated as if he was Jesus. He was locked up in an asylum. OK, um, if someone comes up to you and says, I am the reincarnation of Cleopatra, worship me, you're probably going to move to the other side of the train. Um, OK, so we're used to a world where we don't see memory as being a valid way of proving identity when it doesn't match with the external, the third person identity as well. Like if I say to you, you know, memories from my life and it's like I'm speaking within my own body, I'm not in someone else's body. Well, this seems to have a certain parallel that we go, yeah, well, yeah, you are that person. But if some random person then starts spouting out memories from my life, then this can be a bit of a problem. Uh, and generally, we think that there's some sort of trick involved. Okay, so what have you done? How did you find out that information? Are you hallucinating? Um, you're not really the handy philosopher, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Um, uh, so how can we determine whether Schwander's wander memories are genuine and not merely apparent? As we came to realize in our discussion of Locke's memory theory, it is not legitimate at this point to appeal to self-identity of Schwanda and Wanda, since that is precisely what we're trying to determine. In other words, in attempting to establish that Schwanda's Wanda memories are genuine memories, we cannot argue that they are genuine on the grounds that Schwanda is Wanda. All right, so I'll just pause for a second here because um, Michaels has brought up a concept that she'll you know, name a little bit later on, but is referred to as the Lockean circle. Um, so Locke's personal identity theory seems pretty good. This idea that memory, you know, um, is evidence for consciousness and consciousness is evidence for a continued identity. Um, but it does, it actually commits, you know, the logical fallacy of circular reasoning. So I've got it sort of in the middle of the page there. So we know Schwander is Wanda as she remembers being Wanda, and anyone who possesses Wanda's memories is Wanda. There is no way to verify the authenticity of these memories. So the issue that we've got here is I'm really saying that I'm Wanda because I remember being Wanda, and you can trust that I'm Wanda because I remember being Wanda. There's no like external there's nothing outside of those two properties, me remembering being Wanda and being Wanda, um, that allows me to verify whether these memories are correct or not. Um, you know, are they are they authentic memories? 
Uh, in other words, are they actually the memories that I created? Um, or what if I've just like tortured Wanda and found out snippets about her life? I've built this idea of, you know, I've basically accessed her memories. If we take torture out, imagine a future world where I can um, tap into your brain and download your memories. Um, if I then upload those, am I now Wanda? This seems far too simplistic, okay? Um, because those memories are not what Michael's at least would call authentic memories. Whilst I now, through the upload process, possess all of Wanda's memories, that doesn't make me Wanda because they're not actually the memories of my identity, even though they've now become part of me because I've uploaded them. Um, hopefully, if this is sounding confusing, it should because um, that's what circular reasoning is. It's very confusing. Um, you know, memory proves identity and you can trust my identity because of memory. Well, what? Like you have, you've said a whole lot of nothing there. And this is the point that Michaels is making with the Lockean circle, okay? Um, simply because I possess Wanda's memories doesn't mean that they are genuine memories, okay? Um, uh, so yeah, we cannot argue that they are genuine on the grounds that Schwanda is Wanda. Okay, so Michaels is saying we really can't use this to determine that Schwanda is the same, uh, well, has the same identity as Wanda, um, because the evidence, yeah, it's circular in nature. There's no external proof of whether these memories are genuine or not. Uh, perhaps it is possible to stop short of circularity. Why couldn't we say that Schwander's Wanda memories are genuine because the brain that is remembering is the same brain uh, that had the original experiences? Uh, here we go into the same brain theory of identity. Okay, So Michaels is trying to give this external way of authenticating the memories. All right. So if we think of the example that I gave, the idea of uploading Wanda's memories into my body and my brain, okay, um, well, these aren't authentic because I've uploaded, the, up, sorry, uploaded these memories into my brain. My brain did not experience these memories. My brain did not encode these memories itself. It's simply taking the encoding that Wanda's brain did and applying it to my brain. But this is not the case that we're looking at with Michael's um, thought experiment. We are literally, uh, excuse me, literally talking about the memories, sorry, the brain that encoded those memories. This is the brain that had the experience of, you know, Michaels later on uses the example of learning to ride a bike. It was that brain that is now still possessing those memories. So there's actually been no transference. I haven't had to download and then upload it. It's simply the brain that has moved. The memories themselves haven't actually moved. They've stayed within the brain. Can we use this as a form of um, evidence for um, the brain? Uh, sorry, for Schwander being Wanda, okay? The same brain theory. Um, thus, the experiences are preserved in the very organ that underwent them. Though there is an initial plausibility to this response, so it seems pretty good, it fails to solve our problem. Suppose that Schwanda is Wanda, remembering the experience of learning to ride a bike. Though the brain in question is indeed the same, it is nonetheless clear to all of us that brains alone do not learn to ride bicycles, nor indeed do brain alone, brains alone remember having done, uh, having done so. People learn to ride bicycles, and people remember having done so. Um, so the key thing, uh, to provide an example to help explain this criticism that Michaels is offering to the same brain theory, imagine that when I learned to ride my bike, I fell over and I cut my arm and it left a scar. Now, my memory of riding a bike will be of that crash and of that cut, and when I look at my arm, I will have the scar to match that. Um, but Schwander waking up will have the memory of learning to ride a bike, the memory of cutting her arm, but will not have the scar. Now, this does not 
like it's not necessarily important in terms of well you know scars can fade and that sort of stuff yeah absolutely true but what it's just a little way of trying to conceptualize this idea that it's not just your brain that builds memories your entire person is what experiences things and builds memories yes they might be stored in the brain but it is not your brain that builds a memory it is you the whole you the whole person of you that builds the memory um, yes the brain is a crucial part of that but it is not the only part of that um, so michaels is sort of saying however the same brain theory whilst it works to explain why schwander would remember everything that wanda went through it doesn't actually help us to say that schwander therefore is wanda because whilst Schwanda has Wanda's memories. Schwanda did not experience Wanda's memories. Okay, the person who is lying in the bed in the health center did not experience those memories. Um, uh, and the question we are trying to answer is whether Schwanda, who is remembering, is the same person uh, as Wanda, who did the bicycling. Um, you know, another way to think about this is um, physical capabilities. Uh, let's imagine for a moment that you, um, uh, you were born with a birth defect and so uh, your legs don't function um, uh, well enough to be able to ride a bike. Okay? Now, exactly the same scenario. Wanda's brain gets put into your head after the steamroller and the stroke. Wanda will remember learning to ride a bike. However, Schwanda doesn't have the physical capability of learning to ride a bike. And most importantly, the body that has woken up in the bed has never had the physical capability of riding a bike. So is it really true that this person who's woken up in the bed has, uh, can remember learning to ride a bike? Um, because they never have and never will. Um, this memory doesn't match the body, which makes sense, because it's a different brain in the body. But are we really right in saying that the person lying in the bed, Schwanda, is the same as Wanda? They have a memory of riding a bike, and yet they cannot ride a bike. Um, so it's, it's a tricky one, and it's a fair point of criticism for the same brain theory. Simply possessing memories does not make you the same as the person who experienced those memories. Uh, and simply possessing the brain that encoded those memories does not make you the same person um, as the person who experienced those memories. Uh, the appeal to the fact that the same brain is involved in each event does not provide us with a way out of the Lockean circle. So once again, you know, the Lockean circle, I've written it up there for you, but basically this is committing the same problem. We know Schwander is Wanda because Schwander has Wanda's brain and this is the only form of evidence we have for Schwander being Wanda, uh, that she has Wanda's brain. Um, and everything that goes along with the brain, like memories and thoughts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we've still got this issue of authenticity or genuine memory. Um, whilst the brain that is now within Schwanda did encode the memory of riding a bike, this is not the same as the person who experienced riding a bike for the first time. So Michaels is really drawing a distinction here between the way that we use the word, for example, brain, and the way that we use the word person. Person is much more of a complete account of who you are and what you do. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Um, one thing I probably should have said right at the start is that Michaels is not necessarily going to be offering her own theory on identity. Um, in this reading, she's really just outlining the fact that some of the theories that have been suggested as solutions to personal identity are not as strong as they may initially seem. So it's more of a cr critique piece against um, you know, Hume and particularly Locke. Okay. I uh, hope you've enjoyed. Um, as always, like and subscribe. And yeah, hope you have a good day. Bye.